Hi guys, Sandy from The Paddle School here. In this video today, we're gonna to do a match analysis for players wanting to improve their game. Now this is roughly a high beginner, low intermediate level. Obviously this is relevant to where you play in your country, so it might be different between countries. But the main thing is that we're gonna talk about some really important aspects of the game that will hopefully help improve your paddle. Now after the intro, we're gonna go straight into court position. So generally this first one, the court position is not too bad. There's a couple of situations like here, for example, with the bandeja that you want to see the player recover back up to net. And there is a time when players are trying to rush their way into net, like you see here, hitting and then trying to come forward when it probably wasn't the right opportunity. But generally the pairs were moving together. Now what we see here is players moving into no man's land. And this is something that we discuss on the YouTube channel more, but the player moves forward and therefore they get stuck at the back of that court. So you've got to make sure that if you do come forward, it's all the way to the net and you don't get stuck in this middle land. And you can see it again here, the players standing there and it leaves a lot of gaps and exposes them to the volleyers. Now what we see here is a lot of drop shots. Now if you see a drop shot like this, you know that the person has limited options. So they've got to come forward here, another drop shot. And you can see that the players are watching as opposed to moving into position for that drop shot. So that's something that you should consider and always be aware of the surroundings. Here, another example, the lob goes over the head. Your partner should go back and at least be ready there. He was lucky not to get that volley put past him because it's important to try and finish the point or at least put your opponents under pressure if they are in the wrong position. And here we'll see this again. The player comes into that no man's land and he hits straight to him instead of hitting to the player at the back and then ends up hitting a lob and they don't take advantage of that situation. It's really important you're in the correct positions from the start. Here you can see the server's partner's too close to that net, leaving a big space behind him, but also the server hasn't come across quick enough and has left that space down the line, forcing them straight back after the serve, which is not a situation that you want to be in. There's then a series of lobs where we can talk about trying to hit a bahada on some of these because they do go over the head, but you do need to get back early into that position if you want to do that. So again, looking at the server's position here, you can see that they serve and they come close. They're both inside that first post. You can see the returner has the racket underneath the ball, so he's gonna lob, which means he's got loads of space to go for if they get so close after that serve. Ideally, you want to see what your opponent is gonna do with their return, and then you judge whether to come forward or not. And again, the same there at the first post, the racket is way underneath the ball, so he's definitely going for a lob. And this is really important to notice. So you want good court position and then to see what your opponents are doing so you can get into position. So you can see through those points how important the court position is. When you're at net, you want to be in the right net position. When you're at the back, the right position to defend. If you get in that middle area or if you kind of move out of place, then you can see the players really struggle because your opponents can take advantage of that. The next topic we're gonna to talk about will be your serve, where to go after your serve, but also where you should be aiming. So following on from the last section about court position, you really must serve volley because essentially you're giving your opponents that net position. And that's what's happened here after the serve, they've stayed back and they've lost the point because of it. Again, we see here another situation where the player comes and he doesn't get into the right position too far back behind the second post. You're immediately on the defensive there and it makes a very difficult first volley. Here we're going to see also that your serve is really important. There's so many balls that are bouncing short in the service box, making it easy for the opponent to return, attack and come forward. So you can see how important it is to serve and volley, but also to serve and volley and get to the right place in the court. That stands you in the best chance possible to win that point. The other thing you can see there is that serve accuracy is important and you're the one who's in control of your own serve. So take your time, aim your serve, and that way you stand a better chance of getting an easy first volley. If you find these match analysis useful, please don't forget to click subscribe. Shows me that you're enjoying the content, but also helps spread the game to more players. The next area we're gonna talk about is how to use the lob. To start with, we'll look at a good example of using a lob. So here, there's a short volley, the player comes forward, lob over the head and comes forward with their partner. Now that is the perfect example of how you should be trying to get the net position if you can. 
And this is just considered quite a simple way, a risk-free way of moving yourself and your partner to the net and forcing your opponents back. So here you see a short ball. This would be a perfect opportunity that both players are inside that second post. But if you try to hit through them, you could end up at the back of the court and therefore end up losing on a ball where you could have got the net. So again here we we'll see the player try and hit through their opponents and again there's a volley down to the corner and immediately you go from being in an opportunity to get forward to being on that back foot. There are times when it would be good to hit into the gaps. Here for example there are spaces but it would just be less risky to go for a lob. The lob doesn't need to be an amazing shot that lands a few inches from the glass with spin that stops it bouncing. The lob is really just a way of putting the ball over your opponent's head, so forcing them back and allowing you the time to get to net. That's all the lob is and it's a really easy way, the best, most efficient way for you to take that net position. Next we're going to talk about how to attack after the back glass when you have been lobbed. So here we look at a good example of the Bahada to begin with. So the lob goes over, nice back into position, early preparation, good attacking shot after the glass. But it's really important that you get yourself behind that ball if you want to be able to do that. Here you can see there's not that same movement back and therefore the player ends up scooping it from behind them. And that means you only can lob from that position. And this is something that we see, it's quite common with this lob that players are taking that ball from behind them. Again, we see another one where they end up taking the ball too low behind them and it's difficult to do a lot with that. So you want to get behind the ball, otherwise you're forced to scoop and therefore it makes it easy for your opponents. The other important thing when it comes to the shot selection is when to hit the Bahala and when to hit a different type of shot. So something we see a lot is when the player gets hit a lob, instead of trying to hit a smash falling backwards and you end up behind the service line, a little bit like this shot, you should be letting that ball bounce and play a Bahala after the glass and that will leave you in a much better position. The other situation that you see this is when you get forced back and the lob goes back towards that back glass and you actually have time to get around and play a Bahala but instead you hit against the back glass and this also gives you much fewer options. I can't stress this enough, when you do get lobbed and it goes over your head and it bounces off that back glass, the importance of getting behind that ball, it gives you so many more options. You could see plenty of examples here of players being in front of the ball and then having to scoop it and their only option is to lob it. So whenever you're lobbed and you've got the chance, make sure you sprint back and get behind that ball so that you can try and attack it if you can. So next we're going to talk about your volleys, being alert in your volley position and also going for the right areas on the court. One thing we see a lot with the volley is just not being alert or ready at net. Here you can see it's almost like the volleyers both sides have been caught by surprise from that shot and they've ended up blocking a ball which potentially they could have done a little bit more with it. Another thing we see is actually players just not being ready for that ball and they end up edging their way back into the court and therefore they lose the net position. The other thing is the ready position. Here the players at this end, you can see the ready position is not up and in front, instead it's down to one side, and it means they're slow to react to the forehand and backhand volleys. Here you see again, the racket's got to move so far to get from the forehand position to the backhand volley. Again, we're seeing late contacts which make mistakes. The volleys are such an important part of the game because you work hard to get the net position and it's the objective in the paddle point. So when you do get here, always be alert, always be ready for that ball and expect it to come to you. Even if one goes to your partner, the next one expect it's gonna to come to you. That way you're less likely to be caught by surprise. If you know any players at this level, please share this video with them because this is the only way that you can improve the overall level at your club is by getting everyone to play a little bit better. Now we're gonna talk about how to finish the points. For me, this is a great example of how to finish the point. So the first smash, a bandeka type smash, slow to the back, forcing the opponents back, then an easy one that you can be really aggressive on. And that for me is great shot selection. Again, we're gonna see another one here where the smash goes into that corner and that's actually just a good directional smash. You're gonna see that now. Instead of going flat against that back glass makes it difficult for the opponents. The problems come when those smashes are not as accurate or direction is not as good into those corners. And you're gonna see that here, the smash, that is another good example, but this one, it goes down against that back glass, making it easy for the opponents to hit when they could have potentially finished the point on that shot. 
When you hit a hard flat smash down and against that back glass in quite a straight motion, like this for example, you have to make sure that your opponents can't reach it. Because again, if they do, you end up in trouble. So you really only go for that shot when it's an easy opportunity. And here another example of allowing your opponents back in. Here you can see that the speed is a really important aspect of the smash. If you can hit aggressively at the right times and hit soft at the right times, then you're more likely to win the point. Also, if you are gonna hit down a smash so it bounces and hits that back glass and you're trying to bring it back to your side, you have to hit an absolute monster of a smash to get it over this side of the net without giving your opponents the opportunity to attack. So the direction is important and often a smash to the corner diagonally is probably the best way to go. So we cover some really important areas of the game there, some tactics as well as some shot selection and a little bit of technique as well. So I'm going to put the match analysis playlist on this side and you can go through those matches and see how they compare and also check out different areas of the game for those matches.